today I want to be talking about the studios and the films that they picked to promote during the 2023 Super Bowl. Let's talk for a minute. Now, the first studio that we're going to be talking about is Universal because they've had the highest number of films for films that they promoted during the big game. And with that first film, we're going to be talking about Fast 10, Fast X, the naming of these movies. With this film, let's first go over the director. Justin Lin had come back for F9, The Fast Saga, again, the naming of these movies, and they started filming. And then he quit. There were creative differences, there were beefs and tensions on set, and what happens? Now they need a new director right away, because the studio is saying, hey, we are filming this thing. Cameras are rolling, things are moving. Louis Leterrier is a director that is contacted. He said that he had four days to pretty much rewrite the film and get going and be on set. I think it's a great choice to have to fill in as director. Louis Leterrier is the director and producer of Le Pen on Netflix, an awesome series if you have not seen it. He also directed the first two Transporter movies with Jason Statham, and he also directed the Ed Norton the Incredible Hulk, the one film that Ed Norton had in the MCU before he suddenly became Mark Ruffalo for the rest of the Hulk appearances. I think it's a great choice as far as Louis Leterrier. He's wonderful with action. Let's see where he takes this. It's a huge challenge. Brother, I, I feel for you. I really, really do. As far as cast is concerned, it's the same cast as before. And what I want to go over with the cast or what's new here with the cast. So first of all, Jason Momoa plays the villain. In this movie and you have the additions of Rita Moreno and Brie Larson. The release date for Fast 10 is May 19th. Next up we have Strays. One thing, a little side note here, I just want to mention that the Super Bowl focuses on franchises, on remakes, on sequels, on prequels, on adaptations. So when you see an original film like Strays in a Super Bowl spot, that has my attention. With Strays, who is the director? We have Josh Greenbaum, director of TV series Fresh Off the Boat. The voice cast for this film, it's Will Ferrell, Isla Fisher, and Jamie Foxx. And then you have the live action performance of Will Forte. Think of it like a Homeward Bound type of movie for adults. It's like Homeward Bound meets Super Bad. You have a dog who is abandoned by his owner, and now this dog and his other dog friends, they want to get revenge on this owner. This movie is going to be out in theaters on June 9th. I cannot recommend it enough to go onto YouTube and search Stray's Red Band Trailer. It's awesome. Go check it out. Next up for Universal, Super Mario Brothers. The last time we saw a Super Mario's Brother movie, first of all, that one was live action. It was with Bob Hoskins as Mario, John Leguizamo as Luigi, and Dennis Hopper as Koopa or Bowser. I forget which. I think it was Koopa. It was so awful that it's a classic now. Anytime it's on TV, I have to watch a little bit of it because it's so completely bad. With this one, though, it is an animated film. It is made by a group within Universal called Illumination Entertainment. This is the same team, same organization that made the Despicable Me movies and the Minion movies. The voice cast, it's a stacked cast, which includes Chris Pratt as Mario, Charlie Day as Luigi, and you have Anna Taylor-Joy as Peach, Jack Black as Bowser. The release date for it is April 7th. The fourth and last film that Universal promoted during the Super Bowl was Cocaine Bear. No, 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 no. You heard that correctly. Cocaine Bear. You know, that's one of those titles where I imagine it's like any cast member who gets the script or hears about it. It's probably like the same story that Samuel L. Jackson had with Snakes on a Plane. As soon as he saw the script, he's like, I don't care what it's about. Snakes on a Plane? I'm in. Let's go. Let's go do this. You have Elizabeth Banks directing. I'm really excited to have her be the one helming this. You also have a pretty big cast there. It's Ray Liotta, the late Ray Liotta's, I think, last feature film. I don't know if it was his last work overall. That might have been the fantastic Apple series, Blackbird. Please see this series if you haven't seen it already. The rest of the cast includes O'Shea Jackson Jr., Ice Cube's son. Aldrich Erickson, so if you've seen the movie Solo, the Star Wars movie Solo, Matthew Rice, Carrie Russell, and Margot Martindale from The Americans, as well as Isaiah Whitlock Jr., so many Spike Lee movies he's been in. The release date for that film is February 24th. Next studio is Paramount. Now with Paramount, the first film we're going to talk about is Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves. 
Who are the directors for this movie? It's Jonathan Goldstein and John Francis Daly. These guys directed the movies Vacation, the remake of the National Lampoon Vacation movies, and Game Night with Jason Bateman. The cast for this movie, though, it's Chris Pine, Michelle Rodriguez, Reggie Jean Page, and Hugh Grant. A couple things I want to note about this movie. First of all, it's the Dungeons & Dragons franchise. This is a beloved game by people all around the world. There's a lot of expectations that you have to live up to. Another thing for me, Lauren Balf, the composer Lauren Balf, I love his work. Mission Impossible Fallout, he created an incredible score for that film, so I have become a fan of his ever since. He is scoring this movie, so already I'm excited just because of that fact alone. Another thing to note, too, is that you have Chris Pine and Michelle Rodriguez. These are actors that they've worked very hard for franchises, right? Michelle Rodriguez, she had the success of Fast and the Furious and continues to have that success, as well as she was in the first Avatar film. And then you have Chris Pine, and I just don't get it. Like, he's charismatic, he can be funny, people like working with him but none of the franchises he's tried to be in have worked. Let's take a look for a second. Star Trek, another Paramount property, by the way. Wonderful movies, very inventive remakes, yet they haven't been profitable. I'm not saying it's because of him. I'm just saying that's just crappy luck. And then for him also, Jack Ryan. Jack Ryan Shadow Recruit, the movie that I believe it was from 2014. Although, you know what? I don't really blame him for that one. I kind of blame that one on the director, Kenneth Branagh. He really phoned that one in. And I think it was because he really just wanted to focus more on the next film that he wanted to do, which was Cinderella for Disney. Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves will be in the theaters on March 10th. The next film for Paramount that was promoted during the Super Bowl was Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Who's directing Transformers 7? It's Stephen Capel Jr. And that's actually kind of a cool part of this film because Stephen Capel Jr. directed Creed 2. Talk about pressure. You're following in the footsteps of Creed 1 directed by Ryan Coogler. Capel Jr. did a great job. He made it a lot of fun with Creed 2. It was really cool to see Ivan Drago brought back in and then having it be about not Drago and Rocky, but their sons, or well, Creed's son, and then Drago, Ivan Drago's son. But coming back to Transformers 7, next thing I want to talk about here is the cast for the film. This installment is being led by Anthony Ramos. That's also really exciting because Ramos has been in a lot of independent films. He's been in some big films as well. He is a young and exciting, up and coming, very charismatic actor. And some other fun things about this installment is that you have some great new voice actors that are being brought on board, which include Michelle Yao, Ron Perlman, Pete Davidson, and Peter Dinklage, all being voice actors for Transformers in the movie. And of course, you do not have a Transformers movie without voice actor Peter Cullen, the original Optimus Prime. This movie will be in theaters on June 9th. And then the next Super Bowl ad for Paramount was Scream 6 and Paramount. Thank you. You're finally just putting the number in the title. Now, explain to me this, though. You had a Scream movie come out last year, 2022. You just called it Scream, not Scream 5, which it was. It wasn't a remake. It was a continuation story, but you called it Scream. You know who would have a problem with that? The late Wes Craven, the guy who launched the very franchise that we're talking about. Scream was his movie. Okay, who are the directors for Scream 6? The directors are Matt Bettelini Olpin and Tyler Gillette. These are the same directors from Scream 5 of last year. The cast for this new movie includes Jenny Ortega, Wednesday, Wednesday Adams. She's continuing from being in the previous installment, Scream 5, as well as Courtney Cox, who has been with this franchise from the beginning. Some important things of note with this installment, there's no Nev Campbell, and besides the directors coming back to make this film, Scream 6, the Scream 5 writers are also back on board. So the same team from the last installment. And this movie, Scream 6, is going to be in theaters on March 10th. The next studio up is Disney, and the first film we're going to talk about that they promoted during the Super Bowl, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. The director for this film is James Mangold the guy who made Ford vs. Ferrari and Logan. We're going to come back to talking about him in a minute. The cast for this film. Of course, Harrison Ford is back playing Indy. You have Phoebe Waller-Bridge from Fleabag, as well as Mads Mikkelsen, who played the villain in Casino Royale. One important thing with this installment, this is the first Indiana Jones movie that Steven Spielberg himself is not directing, but he picked an amazing guy to be the director for this film. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny will be in theaters on June 30th. Next film. Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Who is the director for this film? James Gunn. This is the same director who did Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1 and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I have more to say on this guy. Let's come back to that. It is pretty much the same cast as before. This is supposed to be the wrapping up of their story. So again, Chris Pratt, 
Zoe Saldana, Dave Batista, Vin Diesel as Groot, Bradley Cooper as Rocket Raccoon. Something to note with this film is not only is it wrapping up this trilogy of Guardians of the Galaxy, but what a hell of a way for James Gunn to wrap up his relationship with Disney. James Gunn is now the head of the DC movie studio for Warner Brothers, and we're going to see a bunch of crazy movies come out over the next few years coming from the mind of this guy. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 will be in theaters on May 5th. The last film from Disney that we're going to be talking about that they promoted during the Super Bowl was Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Who was a director of this film? Peyton Reed. Same guy who directed Ant-Man and Ant-Man and the Wasp. The cast. Same cast from the first and second films, but one big difference here with this film is you have the addition of Jonathan Majors playing the villain. Something I want to note about Ant-Man. The movie came out in the theaters February 17th, so it's already out in the theaters now. I've seen the reviews. The critics don't like it. Supposedly audiences like it, but everything I've seen online on social media or on TikTok or Instagram is pretty brutal. But I'm not going after Quantum Mania for any of the reasons that they're talking about. I haven't even seen the film yet, but I'm already critical of one thing with this movie. Why did you not include or bring back Michael Pena as the character Luis? He is hysterical in the first two movies. Look, I get it. With the inclusion of Jonathan Majors and his new character, it's supposed to be darker and grittier and setting up stuff for further down in the MCU. But if you have something that's great, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Why would you leave this element out of this movie? The next studio that we're going to be talking about is MGM. The first film from MGM that was promoted during the Super Bowl was the movie called Air. Now, who is the director of Air? Ben Affleck. And then who are the cast that are in Air? Longtime business partner and friend of Ben Affleck, Matt Damon. This is the first time that Affleck is actually directing Damon. Matt Damon's in the movie. Ben Affleck's in the movie, Viola Davis, Marlon Wayans, Jason Bateman, Chris Messina, Chris Tucker, Tom Papa. That's an awesome cast. I am so on board already, but there's more. With this movie, I'm also excited because it's a 2021 Blacklist script. Now, for those of you not familiar with the Blacklist, it's a script that is part of a group of the best unproduced screenplays in the industry. And that list is updated and published every year. This is one of those scripts. And another thing too, I get that Alex Convery was the guy who wrote the film. There was also a rewrite that was done by Damon and Affleck together. It is the third time that Damon and Affleck are collaborating with writing on a project together. The first time was Good Will Hunting. The second time was The Last Duel. Both movies are fantastic. Please see them if you have not already. Air is going to be released in theaters on April 5th before it's streaming on Prime Video. The next movie up is Creed 3. Who is the director of Creed 3? Michael B. Jordan, the star of the film, is the director of this movie. The cast, it's the same cast from before, but there's two big changes with the cast here. One is that Stallone is not part of this movie, he's not acting in this movie at all. And the addition of, again, Jonathan Majors, again, playing a villain role. The guy is having a great time in his career, and he's not only known for playing villains, he is great However you utilize him, you want him to be the hero, you want him to be the bad guy, you want him to be the friend, whatever you want him to be, this guy can pull it off. Some things to note with Creed 3 though. Sylvester Stallone is not only not acting in this movie, he's not involved with it at all. Now he does have his name put as an executive producer, I think that's probably some sort of contractual obligation, but he had a major falling out with the main producer, Erwin Winkler. I wish there could be a way that these two could come back together and make this film the best that it could be, work together, because whatever their differences were, they created rock. That's such a wonderful film. I watch it anytime it's on. It's given so much hope to independent filmmakers. It broke so many rules. It set so many precedents. It's just sad. I wish that this falling out didn't happen the way it did. The other thing too is Michael B. Jordan, he's a first time director. So the thing I'm telling myself, I always tell myself with a first time director is I really hope they succeed. I hope they knock it out of the park. He's also spoken about how when he's directing the action scenes that his direction is influenced from his love of anime. I want to see what do you mean by that? How does that translate onto the big screen? Let's see how he does that. That movie is going to be in theaters on March 3rd before it eventually will be streaming on Prime Video as well. The next studio we're going to be talking about, Warner Brothers Discovery. And the one and only film that they promoted is The Flash. We have some stuff to unpack with this film. So who's the director of The Flash? Andy Muschietti. Muschietti also directed the remakes of It and It Chapter 2. Now let's talk about the cast for a second. You can't talk about the cast without mentioning the name Ezra Miller. And I'm going to come back to that name for now because there's a lot there. Michael Keaton back as Batman. Okay, the first film I remember ever seeing was the 1989 Batman. Michael Keaton as Bruce Wayne and Batman, Jack Nicholson as the Joker, Tim Burton directing. 
there will always be a special place in my heart for this movie. Anytime it's on, I watch it. I love this movie so much. So seeing Michael Keaton come back from 1989 into this movie now in 2023, I'm there. And then continuing with the cast, we have Ben Affleck playing his version of Bruce Wayne and Batman. Then we have Sasha Kale, Sasha Kale, who is playing Supergirl. One thing I want to say about this, if you need a feel-good video to watch, go onto YouTube and search The Flash Supergirl Sasha Kale, and you'll find a video where it's the director Andy Muschietti on one side of the frame and Sasha Kale on the left side. The way he tells her, you are Supergirl, and he holds up the costume. And when the Superman John Williams composed music starts to fade in, it's one of the coolest videos ever. I could watch that a hundred times. It's such a feel-good video. And then continuing with the cast, we have Michael Shannon returning as General Zod. And then we have Ron Livingston, who's playing the father of Barry Allen, The Flash. Okay, so something to note with The Flash is that this movie has supposedly been testing really well with audiences. And there have been quotes saying, it's the best comic book movie ever made and that's that's saying a lot especially look to me dark knight is still the best comic book movie ever made but here's the sad part ezra miller has been the cast member from hell he is facing some very serious charges multiple charges for multiple instances multiple incidents and he's facing again these very serious charges in court so let's see what happens the movie for now is scheduled to be released on june 16th the last studio that we're going to be talking about that promoted a film during the Super Bowl is Sony. The one film that they promoted was 65. Who directed 65? You have a directing team, Scott Beck and Brian Woods. These are the two who wrote the first A Quiet Place movie. That right there, I'm already very excited. And with your cast, you have Adam Driver from The Last Jedi and newcomer Ariana Greenblatt. The story is you have a futuristic setting, a crash landing on Earth, and what you realize is that even though it's a futuristic setting for them, where all this starts, and they crash land on Earth, it's 65 million years ago. Dinosaurs. Now, before you say cheesy, roll your eyes, any of that, because I was doing that at first myself, there's an important thing to note with this film, and that is that it is produced by horror king legend and director of Doctor Strange 2, Sam Raimi. So what you're telling me is you're doing a futuristic sci-fi story with horror elements and dinosaurs and Sam Raimi is very heavily involved in it. Take my money. Take it. I'm good. I'm ready. You don't... That, yeah, that's all you need to say. I am down. Completely ready for this movie. That one is going to be in theaters on March 10th. To recap, these are the films that these studios are promoting and pushing for now in the summer. And look, I have a great time poking fun at sequels, prequels, and adaptations and all that and the lack of originals. But... Honestly, I do love franchises. If they can make it entertaining, they bring new talent in, or, or even keep the same talent, but come up with new ideas and keep us intrigued and excited, what's not to love? I can't wait to see all of these movies. I hope you check them out. We're going to talk about them together definitely later this year. Go out and enjoy them. Thank you for listening.